Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll study a dynamic arms race and introduce the use of stationarity to adapt backwards induction to games of infinite depth. We'll first spend some time exploring what infinite depth means in terms of the tree, actions, strategies, the path of play, and payoffs. Two players, let's call them Alice and Bob, engage in a dynamic arms race competing for a $5 prize. Alice goes first and they alternate moves. At each turn, a player decides between raise and quit. If the player quits, the other player wins the $5 prize. If the player raises, the game goes on. It costs $1 to raise. To quit is to concede the arms race and the $5 prize that goes with it. To raise is to commit a dollar to building more arms, a dollar that is forever gone, regardless of subsequent play. The game ends if and when one of the two players selects quit at some move. But, given the description of the game on the previous slide, the game in fact has infinitely many moves. If each player raises at every move, the game will not end. The etc. at the bottom of the tree indicates that the game need not end, and the tree continues in the pattern shown. An immediate consequence of infinite depth is that to specify a strategy, we must specify infinitely many actions. The other important consequence is that we need to specify payoffs in the event that the game does not end. In this game, if each player raises at every move, we say that each player's payoff is negative infinity, since each player raises infinitely many times at a cost of $1 per raise. Now, we'll look at some strategy pairs, the induced paths of play, and corresponding payoffs. First, consider the strategy pair in which A quits at every move and B raises at every move. The branches corresponding to these strategies are marked in blue. The path of play is that A quits and the game ends. A receives payoff zero. B receives the $5 prize because A quit on the path of play. A never raised on the path of play, so A's cost of raises is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. B receives payoff five. B receives the $5 prize because A quit on the path of play. B never raised on the path of play, so B's cost of raises is zero. Five minus zero is five. Now, consider the strategy pair in which A raises at every move and B quits at every move. The branches corresponding to these strategies are marked in blue. The path of play is that A raises, after which B quits and the game ends. A receives payoff 4. A receives the $5 prize because B quit on the path of play. A raised once on the path of play. So A's cost of raises is 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. B receives payoff 0. A receives the $5 prize because B quit on the path of play. B never raised on the path of play, so B's cost of raises is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Finally, consider the following strategies. A raises at each of A's first five moves, and then quits at all subsequent moves. B raises for each of B's first four moves, and then alternates between quit and raise, quitting at B's fifth move. The branches corresponding to these strategies are marked in blue. The path of play is that A raises and B raises four times, then A raises, and then B quits. A receives payoff zero. A receives the $5 prize because B quit on the path of play. A raised five times on the path of play, so A's cost of raises is five. Five minus five is zero. B receives payoff minus four. A receives the $5 prize because B quit on the path of play. B raised four times on the path of play, so B's cost of raises is four. Zero minus four is minus four. Our goal for the rest of this video is to find two pure strategy subgame perfect Nash equilibria of this game. However, we have a major problem. Our go-to method, backwards induction, 
requires that we start at a last move, and this tree, as is, has no last move. So, we need to figure out some way to make backwards induction work, despite the infinite depth of the tree. The some way is stationarity, using the fact that the game contains a copy of itself. In this slide, the subgame starting from A's second move is gray. The gray subgame is strategically equivalent to the main game. Payments are simply reduced by one at every terminal node to reflect the fact that the gray subgame follows one raise by A and another raise by B. Since all payoffs are reduced by one relative to the main game, the game is strategically equivalent. The evolution of payoffs in the main game and the gray subgame follows the same pattern. When we refer to stationarity, we mean that the game contains a copy of itself as a subgame. Now, why is stationarity useful? It means that we just need to figure out what is going on in subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in the first two moves of the game, in the portion of the tree shown in black. Then, stationarity says that the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium consists of 1. A doing at all of A's moves whatever A did at A's first move and 2, B doing at all of B's moves, whatever B did at B's first move. So, we only need to deal with two moves of this infinite depth game to find subgame perfect Nash equilibria. Let's give a summary of the arguments we'll make to construct our two pure strategy subgame perfect Nash equilibria. It's probably a good idea to jot down at least all the components of case one. On the next few slides, we'll show what each of these steps looks like on the game tree. Go ahead, pause the video. Okay, ready? Let's go. You can always come back to this slide. Video lectures have all sorts of drawbacks, but erasing the board forever is not one of them. Both players playing raise at each of their respective moves leads to payoffs of negative infinity for each player. This strategy pair can't be a Nash equilibrium, subgame perfect or otherwise, since either player could profitably deviate to a strategy in which that player quits at one or more moves. Now, observe that a player who quits in a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium should quit at that player's first move. Quitting means ceding the $5 prize to the other player. The rational thing to do when ceding the prize is to cede it right away and spend no money on raises. Now we're ready to construct the two pure strategy subgame perfect Nash equilibria. We'll first construct a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in which player A quits. A quits at A's first move. Since it's rational for A to quit at A's first move, stationarity tells us it is rational for A to quit at all of A's moves, since A's moves are all strategically equivalent. If A quits at all moves, it's rational for B to raise at B's first move, since raising gives B a payoff of 4, and quitting gives B a payoff of 0. If it's rational for B to raise at B's first move, it is rational for B to raise at all of B's moves, since B's moves are all strategically equivalent. We conclude that there is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in which A quits, namely A quits at all of A's moves, and B raises at all of B's moves. Second, we'll construct a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in which player B quits. B quits at B's first move. Since it's rational for B to quit at B's first move, stationarity tells us it is rational for B to quit at all of B's moves, since B's moves are all strategically equivalent. If B quits at all moves, it's rational for A to raise at A's first move, since raising gives A a payoff of 4, and quitting gives A a payoff of 0. If it's rational for A to raise at A's first move, it is rational for A to raise at all of A's moves, since A's moves are all strategically equivalent. We conclude that there is a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in which B quits, namely, A raises at all of A's moves, and B quits at all of B's moves. We've been careful to specify that these are pure strategy subgame perfect Nash equilibria, so you might be wondering whether there is another subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, not in pure strategies. You're right to wonder, and there is one. 
Finding it requires a bit of a math detour that we're not going to take, but if you want to have a go, we do have all of the mathematical machinery. Try following the method we use to find Pure Strategy subgame perfect Nash equilibria, but do so over expected payoffs. Thanks so much for watching this video about a dynamic arms race and the use of stationarity to find a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in a game of infinite depth. In the next two videos, we'll see another example of stationarity in our study of Rubinstein's bargaining game.